Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. I'm Lisa Solomon. Excited to have an Instagram Live today. Um, I'll be talking with Dina uh, Consilio Lens, and we're going to be talking about creating content in times of crisis. So really excited to have her join me today. She just got on. I see that. So let me invite her really quickly. Oh, I got it. She awesome. She's joining right now. We'll just wait a few minutes. Love it. Oh, look at that. Hi, so Lisa. Time. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined. That was so much easier than yesterday. <laughs> much easier. And thank you for the rehearsal yesterday. It's my first one. I love it. It's great. I'm so excited. Well, what I usually like to do is just, you know, take a few minutes, let people join. Sure. Um, and because they do, I save these. You know, people can, whether they watch it live or not, they can always come back and watch it later. So I always like to just kind of introduce what I'm doing, do a little introduction, and then I'll introduce you and we'll just have a conversation. That's great. I see my friend Lauren Horn just joined. Hi, Lauren. I love that. That's awesome. I love that. Yes. Exactly. I know. It's great because it's fun to see. And then we'll have <laughs> time at the end and we'll just, you know, let people ask questions and things Perfect. like that. That sounds uh, lovely. Perfect. So um, just for those joining, uh, those that maybe watch this later, I'm Lisa Solomon. I'm the founder of the Thinium Collective. And we are uh, a company that's an online education platform. We create courses with experts in the fields of advertising, marketing, and media. We create courses that give you real knowledge and skills to help you improve in your career. We're founded on this idea that knowledge is power knowledge shared is power multiplied. So we started these live conversations in order to empower people uh, with new information, uh, give them skills, knowledge from a variety of different people, people who are potentially experts or are experts within Athenium Collective. And we just wanna help you power up today. Um, so I'm excited to have an expert actually here with me today, Dina. Um, Dina and I actually met, God, how long ago was it? And we did not meet because of business. We met because of um, our kids went to the same school, right? Yes, they did go in LA. So yeah. it was uh, three and a half, my goodness, it's three and a half years ago. Oh my God, time flies. I know. Fast. It was one of the best <laughs> things meeting you in LA. <laughs> no, it's true. And it's awesome that we've been able to keep in touch and find ways to work together. So um, Dina is actually a, a director, a content creator, really, um, who's worked in the fields of fashion, music, nonprofit. She uh, creates really inspiring content. She helps so many of her clients not only create com content, but she also does a really good job of helping them figure out how do you distribute it? How do you get it to actually have meaning and do what it's supposed to? Because most people create content for a reason. Um, and knowing what that is and how to use that and having a producer director who can help you do that is even that much more powerful. So we want to talk today a little bit about uh, creating content right now, especially in times of crisis. Um, people need to stand out. There's a lot going on um, and a lot of reasons why people should be creating great content between COVID-19, uh, people creating content for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to really talk about what are some of the tricks right now and, and tools in order to create content that matters, but also has purpose and gets people's attention. Mm -hmm. So with that, why don't we just start with, why don't you give me a little bit about your background? Sure. So um, I started off my career years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as a producer um, slash creative director and I actually started at MTV and then I went on to news and I thought I wanted to do on camera interviewing. And at the time I wasn't um, diverse enough in terms of being ethnically diverse, which is so odd today to where we're at. And then I decided to really hone my skills and design. And um, I became a big advocate of creating different types of type treatment um, in content ways. So I went on to Sony Music and I was very fortunate enough to work for Tommy Mottola. And I will say that the trust that he gave me, and I was so um, young in my career, it really allowed me to catapult into directing music videos, 
um, EPKs, and I really honed my eye at that point. And um, then I started off, I was lucky enough to be requested from other record companies. So that was when I formed DCL Media, and I started doing a lot of different types of content. Um, but not only TV and radio spots, but music videos and figuring out where to place them. Um, and at the time, the music industry had very hefty budgets, but we also had times that they weren't so hefty. So I always felt this responsibility of after I created it, after I had shot it, after I sat hours and hours in the edit room, after I designed the type or I made a flip book that I was influenced from a Barney's um, fashion site for a band, where is it going to live afterwards? Like after it goes on TV or on digital, where does it live? And I felt this responsibility as I took on more and more nonprofit clients to do this. And I think a really good, perfect example was my first nonprofit client I had, which was St. Jude Children's Research mm -hmm. Hospital. And it was brilliant. They wanted to redo their look and feel. I had come from the music industry. And at the time I thought, okay, well, how can I blend the two genres together and get a result that they may never have even expected? And I had um, asked Miley Cyrus and Chris Brown um, to uh, join in their Mathathon videos and Trikathon videos. And the Trikathon video I created in completely 2D cell animation, which they had never had before. And I asked a um, band that was on Noggin to create the song. And then after we were done with the Trikathon video, I went to the head of Noggin and I said, you know what, I already have all of this content, it's a 120, it's a 60, it's a 30, it's a 90. I want to give it to you. Would you play it for us? And because this band had already been on Nickelodeon, or yes, Nickelodeon, um, or Noggin, rather, sorry, they were very open to it. And not only did they play it for us, they signed a year contract and also went digital and raised donations by 35%. And that was the first time I ever joined my connections and my forces together. And I had redone the creative for that. And going back to the um, Mathathon after we were done with it, because it was a nice size budget and we had created um, theorems on sets. It was very colorful because at St. Jude, the doctors don't wear white. They wear colored lab coats oh, so I didn't to, make, that. Yeah, to make sure the children are feeling very comfortable and at peace. So I really had to mimic this on the set yet stay on brand. So I went to E Entertainment and they played, um, they talked about the spots and that program raised about 18 to 20% more. And the lovely um, outcome about the noggin situation was that that relationship went on for six years. Wow. And, and noggin all, is the younger kid. The younger one, right? And out of all the um, actors, um, rock stars I've ever been blessed to work with, that I have to say is one of the most rewarding things of my career that I've ever done because it lasted that long. And again, I just went to somebody that I knew, the content was there and they also wanted a longer version. So we were able to create that because I had, you know, I had shot a lot of footage. So I think that that's a first really great example of how to monetize the contacts that you have. And you may not even think that it, there could be a relationship. Yeah, but I wouldn't have thought often, of Noggin and St. Jude's, actually. I know, I know, and it really, really, it was amazing. It was really, my, and it was the first time I had ever done it. And I, but again, I feel like with a nonprofit and even um, other clients I've had, I had this pharmaceutical company, I feel like there's, now you have to be so multitask that I feel like it's a responsibility. If someone's giving you a budget, then where does it go after the initial placement? Yeah, I really feel like you have to be super creative. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like you're saying, you know, creating partnerships, you wouldn't normally expect because yes, if you know, that's what I think gets people's attention as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that's I mean, right now, how do you, you know, break through the clutter, especially given everything oh. that's going on? You know, of course, I mean, I feel like, you know, nationally and internationally, we're all so intertwined right now um, for Black Lives Matter, health, and we really are relying on each other. And I think for the first time, it's giving people pause to think empathy goes a long way. And I think that whatever client one has, whether it's nonprofit, media, um, pharma, um, business, Wall Street, whatever it is, I mean, I just got asked to do a project for a person who owns a, 
a wall company that they are creating um, dividers so people could go back to work. Oh. So, which is, which is brilliant, but it's also, we have to understand that people are afraid to go back and no one wants to get sick. And we've, so this was something that you have to say on a tagline, join us, we're together, we'll help you even, and make whoever the viewer is think that you're going to take care of them just as they're going to take care of you. And I think it's a really, it's a nice global message to send no matter what, you know, genre you're in. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that the people who are doing a really good job have a really strong point of view. Yes, yes, exactly. And they, it's like, and I think we have a great blog post on Athenium Collective mm -hmm. that uh, Dina wrote. And one of her tips was, is what's your why? Why are you doing this? And I think that's something that we need to get more, people need to get more in touch with what's the purpose Yes. And then being creative about that. And also, and what's your messaging? And think beyond today. What do you want to say for the future? Who do you want to engage for the future? So if you're creating an online gala and you think to yourself, you know what? The, of course, the donations are important. But if this attracts a new audience that would never have gone to the gala, that to me is even more important than the donations. For instance, I have... Um, one of my nonprofit clients, I'm pitching them to do a major benefit with Broadway right now with a, I can't really give away too much, but with a major um, music industry player. So the two wouldn't align again, going back to St. Jude, but because of Broadway and the diversity that it could bring, and it will take place of a gala, and we could talk about whatever pillars we want. And again, it's we're together. We are, New York has been hit so hard by COVID. This was really kind of wrapping your arms around the whole situation in many, many different ways. And I think that I always think too with my messaging, I, and I love fashion, I always bring it back to a blue navy dress. I don't create content as an Ann Taylor blue navy dress. I create it that's much more form fitting. Think of a Prada and accessorize it. And you can accessorize it even if you don't have a huge budget. You could use beautiful type. You could, um, you know, switch it to black and white. You could use elements that would surprise an audience. And I had a great mentor in the music industry, Tom Corson, who's head of Warner Music now. And we were in a meeting one day and he said to me, you know when a spot is powerful is when you turn it off and someone still reacts. So meaning Ooh. there's so many ways to produce content. And I do this quite often without a voiceover. So it's about the research that goes into it, the visuals and the music is a huge, huge driving force. And I think it's something that is important to think about these days, especially a lot of people can't shoot footage. They can't, they can't shoot new content. I mean, just like I want to bring up 72 and Sunny. Yes, I, mean, I just that shared shot, that on social media. Oh my gosh, blew me away. It's just, I mean, if you want to, you know, talk yeah. about it and I could, and I could talk about the creative about it, but that image of Martin Luther King and George, George Floyd's brother side by side, that was absolutely brilliant. And that goes back to like the, you know, and I just shared this on social media. So if you follow me, you'll be able to find it, but we're also going to put some of the content that we're talking about. We'll put links Brilliant. in the yes, description. Great. Yeah. Cause there's so much amazing content out there, but what was really interesting, and this was a passion project for people at 72 mm -hmm. and sunny, which mm -hmm. if you don't know, that's an ad agency here in Los Angeles. And what they did was they went through the footage between what was happening. And I think it was 1961 and what was yes. happening today. Uh -huh. And they put them side by side and the footage is identical 60 years different oh my god it was so I know. powerful i know and when it's side by side and the music that went behind that and the research that spot to me yes is defines brilliant research by 72 and sunny and the music and just the way it was created and that is evergreen that will last forever and ever 
And whatever the call to action is, it's about educating. And that's really important right now in, in many aspects. And I think they did a brilliant, brilliant job with it. They really did. Well, the other thing that I think is really interesting is, you know, hopefully some years from now or maybe even months from now, like to be able to add that third to yes. show the change because the it's change. a movement. And if change can happen, mm -hmm. that's going to be even more powerful. So we can finally show that things are different. Right. Because they do seem now like they are going in that path, but we can't go backwards. And I think that that's what that shows. And um, I, well, think I think that's up for that's that's actually up to that's on us. Yes, hundred percent to do to make sure that we move forward. Mm -hmm. And hundred percent. Yeah, and I think and it's really interesting just to see the content. You know, I, I think one of the things that I thought was really powerful was uh, Procter & Gamble. Yes. I, I sent you that this morning. Yes, it was, exactly. And oh, my God. It was um, The Choice. Is that the one you're talking the, about? Yeah, The Choice. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, let's, okay, so Procter & Gamble has created right. just in, amazing content for Black Lives Matter. And I think the first one was The Talk. Yes. Which I get chills just talking about it, which is the conversations that black families have to have in terms of racial bias. That was one. The look. Did you see the look? The look the is. The book is, or well, I want to talk about the, if you don't mind for a second, the way that that type treatment was done. And do you notice it was done in a very, very, very small font? I, you know, I didn't notice that. I was too, and the imagery. The imagery. Was is so powerful. Is well, that's what it is, and so I, the, I believe, as if I was creating this, the reason why it was done in such a small font, you really have to pay attention to it. And the tagline there, which says "Start here," and to oh, me, are we talking about the change? Oh. You're talking about the change. The oh, last I'm talking one. about the change. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. no problem. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Either one. I mean, they're yeah. both good. Let's we'll talk. So just for people who haven't seen it. There's three. One is the look, which I mean, the, right. the talk, which we mentioned. There's the one that's the look. Mm -hmm. And it's very uncomfortable because it yes. is a story of a black man who goes through his day to day life. And yeah. when he goes into certain situations, the looks he gets the from white people. Is, right, exactly. And it is incredibly powerful. And it is also very uncomfortable, which is why we all need to watch it. Um, and then there's the next one, which is the choice. Yes, and that was and one choice I was is really about. about white people making the choice, white Americans, to be anti-racist. And it is really, it's very subtle in some ways because there's not a lot going on image-wise. Like you mentioned, the type is very small, mm -hmm. but wow. I have the, I mean, all three of them gave me the chills. And me as well. And also I think that there's so much that I got out of it. Um, but I think the way at the end when it says start, I just wrote it down. I want to make sure. Yes, yeah, start here. Meaning, you know, that was their call to action. Because we need to rewind, right? And we need to start. We need to start again. And I just think it was a really brilliant tagline and really well written, too. So I think that that's important when you're making and creating content to figure out maybe your old taglines aren't working anymore. Maybe they're yeah. just you. And I, and I also think too, that this gives everyone an amazing opportunity to do something that they may not have thought that they would have done that you're, a, you're in a nonprofit. You may be used to creating very conservative content and maybe now's not the time. Maybe people are looking for a, different look a different feel something that's I don't know maybe out of left field that you may have thought of but also you can attract a new audience like that and that is so powerful and I look at TikTok and I'm going I'm very guilty of this I knew nothing really about it I thought it was really just you know silly songs and kids um you know <laughs> ad-libbing or whatever <laughs> that's where content should be. Even if, even if TikTok is out of fashion in a year and a half, you will get value added there 
so much quicker and get your brand out there to a generation that truly cares. I and you may yeah. not, and it's really and I am a huge advocate right now of getting um, content on TikTok. I really do. There was the influencer um, Gary. I might botch his name. I'm sorry, Venek. Ven, I don't know Venek. What I, I don't know his last name. I'm sorry, but he did a 12 hour stream. He raised $2.3 million and linked it into LinkedIn. So it was what? what was the charity? It was for COVID, basically. Wow, that's impressive. So this is what I'm saying that whatever online gala, whatever sort of um, masterclass, whatever's there, uh, TikTok has an amazing platform. And I don't know if a year and a half from now it will be popular. It might be like Vine, but it, it's almost like grab the opportunity now it's value add, added and you, I don't think companies should be afraid of it. I really don't. I don't think yeah. anyone should be afraid of anything right now. It's an amazing time to create things that one would never even think of. I really feel that way. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. You know, actually I saw that Greenpeace had yeah. done a video uh, mm -hmm. and it was a really well done. It was showing just, you know, all of the horrible things that are happening in terms of climate, uh, fires, just really awful images. But what they did was they took all of those images and they made them TikTok they were, backgrounds. Yeah, they were exactly. Very small. And, you know, this is a, a generation who cares. And they they're really care. their they, background. Yeah. They really, really care. And I also think too, um, the creative agency was Ho who did it. And I think that they were really um, forward thinking in doing that. Because a lot of, I'm not seeing a lot of content like that. And just the way it was framed um, for video calls and for TikTok, um, I think was great. And also the type treatment there was stellar. And again, the music drive the piece. And this, and this spot really pertains to being in quarantine too. So I thought that they did a really, really great job. And I, um, I, I don't know, I think it was really, really well executed. And when I think you say good. type treatment, I just want to make sure that means the text, right? It's how, yeah, that yeah. means it, yes, yeah. that means the text. So basically, you know, I think my first influencer was David Carson years ago in terms of just creating um, typography, and um, I think of it as a piece of art. I just did a, um, some opens for one of my dear clients, Humane Society, for an online concert we just did, and to me, it's about getting beautiful type executed, whether it's on top of each other, there's layers of it. And that it's sort of like a first impression, right? And we, I think that clients need to think about that when they go into creating either if it's a 30 second um, spot, or I did something for them for a 10 second spot for a Twitter audience, it was completely all typography and driven by um, music and sound design. And that was it. There was no voiceover. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so powerful. And it goes back to being creative. Yes. You really does. have to, like you were saying, take risks, do things that you haven't done before. And, and it's interesting you had mentioned that nonprofits tend to be somewhat conservative. Um, have you seen a shift? Have you seen it? You know, the Procter & Gamble always has done some great yes. stuff. So like, who have you seen that is, you know, like, same. I think Save the Children's doing a brilliant job okay. right now. Um, I really do. I've always, um, you know, it's interesting about St. Jude. They have, whatever they do is a huge success. Marlo is yeah. ironically a client of mine, as you know, but not through St. Jude, through AOL. Um, they have a formula that when Thanksgiving starts in the fall, you see black and white images of Jennifer Aniston, you know, so many yeah. actors, and you yeah. just identify with it. So I think in that respect, do I think that they need, in my humble opinion, do I think that they need to really pivot? I don't really think so. They do work, it, they save lives. And right. that's, I, I have nothing to say, but amazing, good work. Um, I think that, um, I think Greenpeace, as a matter of fact, is doing an amazing job. I think a lot of these nonprofits are really looking, even at the content that they have and the audience that they currently have, and who do they want to reach out to? And yeah. now is a really wonderful time to do that online through different platforms like Twitch or um, TikTok. Um, so it's 
really, I was on the phone with the Grammys today and we're trying to figure out something to do with them. And the question is, is that where do we go? Like, what hasn't anyone done yet that we want to do? And of course, we have access to any musical artists we want, but I'm not, I don't want to ask a musical artist until I know how it's going to break the mold. Yeah. And that's that the totally one thing that sense. I always feel like is that I, you must break the mold, especially right now. Because otherwise, it's if you're going to recycle the same thing, you're not going to attract the audience. And again, it is about the bottom line, but it's also the future. Who are you asking to join? And who do you want to educate? There could be plenty yeah. of people, you know, for the Humane Society that they may love animals, but they may not know all their amazing pillars that they have either. So that could attract them, whether it's anti-fur, puppy mills. So we just, you don't know who you're going to attract. And that's something that visuals could really uh, you know, they could really tone in on. It's a really nice opportunity. And speaking of visuals, I, if you don't mind, I wanted to talk about the sand spot. You... I know. Well, so again, uh, we'll set this yes. one up. Okay. And this one really, I mean, I, this Me one too. is a hard one, but it's yeah. so true. And that's the thing that's so interesting about it. So basically sands is the uh, sudden death and uh, neonatal, like yes, neo, when, yeah. So it's yeah, it's like SIDS and neonatal, mm -hmm. or b when young babies basically yeah. die. It's horrible. Um, and what they did was they did a whole animation, it's showing sort of what happens as the mother who's lost her baby, and what happens when everyone kind of avoids you because they don't know what to say. And it is really hard to watch again, because it's true. It's, and that's what's so powerful about it. I think the messaging behind this is that, and obviously you and I being women, and I, I'm sure we've all known someone that, or know of someone that this has sadly happened to. And I don't ever know if there's any words, but what this showed in the 2D cell animation is this woman's grief. Mm -hmm. And when they handed over that cup of tea, I felt the warmth from yeah. that. That's something that I don't, I don't think you would get that feeling if it was just regular footage. And the 2D totally animation agree. here yeah. works quite well. Also, the song's lyrics tell the story. You don't need anything else but her vi visual, her face, and the song's lyrics. And I'm so glad they didn't put a voiceover on that and it makes you feel like if this happens to you that you're really not alone but people are lost for words and when i say this this is why you don't need a voice over there the song says it all and the animation is just brilliantly executed yeah and i think it makes it a little e it's already uncomfortable because yes. it's the truth the truths are the most uncomfortable things to watch but those mm -hmm. are the most powerful yeah but i think that because it was animated it made it both more powerful but more uh i guess easier to watch in some ways i i agree with you and it's funny that we're talking about animation i have a client they're called gmo health and they do a brilliant job animating footage for kids that um define what a disease is. So for instance, if they um, need to know if they have diabetes, it's basically a lot of it is based off of comic books and they do a brilliant job and it, it works because it's animation. That's why it works. And it also, the fear factor for kids, it's like watching a cartoon. It's sort of like being yeah. in your room or on your computer. And I think that animation, it's not appropriate for all content either, but for I think for kids, I think for subjects that are really hard to explain and a voiceover, or you don't have enough time for a VO either. It's a good, it's a really great solution. And even now, animation houses are very, very busy because no one could really shoot. I mean, there are certain areas that are That's opening true. up, but it's a really great way to get your message across. Or you could do some live footage and then animation. And that I am pitching to another nonprofit client of mine because I think that's very, very powerful. And a lot of, um, a lot of them don't do animation. So right. I think it's, it's a very interesting time for that. And 2D is, in terms of a budget, it's a bit more affordable than going ahead and doing 3D. And the, as you can see from the Sands piece, it's 
brilliantly effective. Yeah, it was really well done. So we talked a lot about what's going well. What do you think isn't working right now? Oh, that's an interesting. Um, so I don't know what's not working, but I will tell you this, because I don't feel comfortable commenting on that. But okay. I will tell you this. I, in my own business, I am trying to create partnerships that people would never think of before. Putting either a nonprofit yeah. together with another nonprofit. Um, we were very, very successful in that in the Humane Society. We teamed up with Rob Thomas and um, his wife's organization, Sidewalk Angels. It was a brilliant partnership. And yes, they were both animal organizations. I'm um, So I don't know how open media companies are and nonprofits are to opening up their eyes to different partnerships that they may not have thought of. And the reason why I believe in this is that obviously you get a lot of different content to edit together, but you also get at least two audiences, if yeah. not three, the audience that's with the nonprofit, the audiences that's mm -hmm. with the other company and the new audience that you're going to attract. And then possibly our fourth audience, it may just be interested and whatever music you have, or if yeah. you want to do, if you're having a speaker or someone reading a play. So I feel like that's something that I am really going to try to um, even go to clients that I, potential clients that I don't have. And then of course, create the content, but it's got to, it really goes back to, it's got to live somewhere that's going to be effective. Yeah. I mean, and even if somebody- places. Yes, exactly. Right? And, yeah. And it can, I mean, I think, you know, it's digital, it's on the company's website, it's on Twitch, it's on Facebook Live, it, LinkedIn is a great avenue. And I don't know, I think it could be used a bit more. I really do. And a you lot of people- You don't think they use it enough? I don't think some people do, no. And I okay. think in terms of fundraising, it's a brilliant way because you're usually getting people that have some extra means, you know, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Um, and it's a bit more of a curated audience, a bit more. Um, yeah. I also think that I've always, you know, for years, I have this sort of multi-hyphen career, right? And I feel like companies need to sort of mimic that right now, because I think a lot of people are um, a bit confused on which way to go, right? And how to create content and, but making sure, I mean, even you and I have talked about like, I don't yeah. want to post too much. I don't want to be insensitive. I don't want to say the wrong thing. And there's many things right now. So I think companies are going through a reorg in terms of their messaging. And that, but it could be, it's, it's very, very positive. Um, Absolutely. And that's all the more reason why we have to get your course done. <laughs> yes, we do. We will, we will definitely get it done. Yes. Because there's no doubt that people need it. Yeah. And it is, you know, it's, I think when it comes to marketing right now, content is everything, you know, it's, it it's, everything. it's creating awareness, not only of what you're doing, but it's, it's educating, it's helping people. Like it doesn't all have to be self-serving. It needs to no. be content that you as whether you're a brand, whether you're a company, what is your point of view and how does that point of view help other people? Mm -hmm. We, I was in a meeting the other day and it's so, it's so true what you say, Lisa, it's sort of as simple words as join us, we're together. Um, people need to feel like, and I said this in the beginning of the conversation that just because you're a nonprofit, they're there for you just as much as you are there for them. And it doesn't have to be in a time of crisis either. It's just yeah. it to be a normal feeling of just taking care of one another. And there's empathy in the world. And I think that even if you're, you know, if you're Mars candy, I mean, think about how special, I mean, I could sit on the couch and eat M&Ms for a long time, <laughs> but it's, it's also just a comfort right yeah. now. So that I think is a message that has to work. And I, I don't know, do we have time for an example that I wanted to talk yeah, about? Yeah, we have that? time. We're okay. over at this point. It's, okay. it's fine. Okay. Um, so a few years ago, I did some work for a pharmaceutical company. And this is an amazing story. Um, he was a man from Italy, and he was a hemophiliac. 
he trained for the New York City Marathon for a year with his surgeon and his physical therapist. He came to New York. They asked me to shoot the, him uh, running the marathon. He finished it five minutes before the marathon was closed. I guess it was like 8.30 in the evening with okay. his sticks. And the spot was just supposed to be a one, one minute and 20 second spot for their, um, for, it was for the drug that he was using, basically. Okay. So I did the 120. I made the footage grainy, black and white. In certain areas, I just made red. It was very, very simple, very beautiful, subtle type treatment that blurred on. They got such a great response. And because it was about empathy, that's what yeah. it was. It was the, not the fact that it wasn't really about the drug. It was how his physical therapist walked beside him, how he trained for over a year for this. The fact that he even finished with his sticks. I mean, we were all crying, the whole crew that we were shooting. And then it went on to a 60 second TV spot, which was never supposed to be a 30 second TV spot, a 15 second TV spot. And then it went to 10 to go to digital. Oh this my ended up being a six month commitment that I made to this pharmaceutical company. That's, and it was again yeah. based on, and it was, I thought it was really beautifully executed. Again, it was grainy, it was black and white, it told the story. And as he was running, I had tight moving to talk about his feelings. But it was, it, it the spot grew. And that's, I think that that's what we have to look excited. Um, and we will definitely keep in touch. Yes. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us, uh, whether you joined us live today, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, we will be posting this for those people who are not here live um, and can join us and watch it another time. I want to thank everyone too. And thank you, Lisa. And everyone stay healthy and safe and sane. And thank you very much. I really appreciate this. It's an honor. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dina. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.